Tech Jacks here. Uh, I'm doing another video here in PowerShell. This video, I'm going to show you guys how to import your own module that you created. Um, that might have some functions or scripts in there that work uh, for you, in particular in your environment, that you may want to have access to in your PowerShell sessions. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and open up a PowerShell ISE. I'm going to go ahead and do get module list available. This should show us all of the modules that are accessible. This will allow us to talk a little bit about where modules are gathered from by default in a PowerShell. So as we type in the get module space list available commandlet in parameter. As you can see, the directory in which it has resolved all of the module-like uh, entities and pulled in uh, for the list reside in C colon backslash windows backslash system 32 backslash windows PowerShell backslash version 1.0 backslash modules. So let's go ahead and actually navigate to that directory. We're gonna to go to windows we're going to go to System32, Windows, PowerShell, version 1, Modules. And as you can see, the list pretty much corresponds with what we see on the left. We have Active Directory, we have Active Directory. We have ADDS Deployment, we have ADDS Deployment, App Locker, App Locker, so on and so on. So the way that modules work is, is that they have to be in a directory called Modules that PowerShell will look for, depending on the environmental variable that's set by default when PowerShell launches. In order to look at that, we can go ahead and set environment. Okay, one second. I left out my E and my dollar sign. And then we can do PowerShell module path. And as you can see, the locations in which PowerShell will look for a particular module are a group of three. We have this directory first. It's separated by a semicolon. We have this directory second, which is in program files. And then we have the one that Windows uh, PowerShell actually pulled from, which was the System32 folder that we're currently in, which is the third one that it looks for. So, if we wanted to import and create a new module, we can put it in any one of these three directories. So let's go ahead and take a look and put it in the first directory. In our documents folder, under Windows PowerShell, there should be a subdirectory called modules. But we don't see a subdirectory called modules. All we see is our profile, which was created in a previous video. So what we would actually have to do is create a folder called modules. And that would give us the directory that our session would look into to see our modules. There's nothing in it right now. And actually, I already have a module that I use. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut it over and replace the ones that set up because my actual modules are already in there. However, let's talk a little bit about what's contained so that you guys are not confused about anything that's taking place. When you create a module, you have to create a directory folder that has the same name that your module name will be. So, for instance, the Active Directory module for PowerShell is called Active Directory. You need to create a directory to put that Active Directory module into. So you're going to create a folder called Active Directory, and then you're going to put your Active Directory module and information into that directory. Understand? So 
we can go ahead and go into sub directories and chat. So in our modules directory, we have a module called ADDS deployment. This is a directory that I'm highlighting now, and that has a module in it with the same name. You will see that down the line. The, DI, uh, the DISM uh, has a directory for DISM, and it has a module for DISM. Uh, the ISE, uh, the uh, PKI, uh, all of them, right? It would have a sub uh directory with the same name in the modules and it will have a module name with the same one bitch transfer bitch transfer dacp server dacp server so i created a module called my tools so therefore i should have a guess what module named my tools so my tools is the module i created so i had to create a directory called my tools and put it in there so that's in my modules folder so when I copy over this modules folder off my desktop to the new module folder you guys saw me create, it's going to overwrite the directory, but it's going to also put in my tools directory and in there my tools, my PowerShell module. Make sure we're in a proper directory. Copied it over. And there we go. My tools, my tools. <clears throat> so what I'm going to go ahead and do is close out my PowerShell session and open it back up. And what we're going to do is go ahead and do get module. List available. And this time, since I put it in the directory that's associated with my documents, we should see that we have a module that's available in a separate directory than the other modules that were originally being listed under the system 32 windows, yada, yada, yada. So as you can see, here's get module list available. And if we had one showing up under my profile directory where PowerShell looks first. So you can see there's a module type is called my tools and it shows you a, a couple of the functions that I have available. And then the rest of the modules that are being loaded are being loaded by this directory. So I could have put it in this directory if I wanted to. I chose not to. I chose to put it in a directory uh, that is associated where my profile is located. And as you can see, I have um, access to it. So one of the things I could do is get AD person. I created that module. Let's see if that would work. AD person. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit, let's see, TechJax. And as you can see, this is kind of works like get AD user. However, I had selected specific properties that I wanted to display when I did a get AD person. I wanted the display name, I wanted the given name, surname, the mail, the name, the city, and the distinguished name of the user's account object. And I wanted a list of the members of that that user is a part of. So I wanted to know if that user was in the system administrators, uh, um, um, you know, if they are going to get different uh, Entitlements. If, if this was a computer, it would work like it would show you all the security groups it belongs to and everything like that. Um, we can go ahead and get, um, let's see, get command from the module. Module my tools. If I actually put in the end so that command actually is command, it might work. So these are the four functions that I have written in my tools. We can go ahead and go to modules and open it up and see. <clears throat> so get CM app. What that does is I created that so that I can automatically uh, put in an application name into SCCM. Uh, query SCCM is going to set the location to the cast for each application that our list is going to go ahead and go out and find an application that is associated with it. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the ways that you can set up functions to do certain work. But um, I have one for get AD person, which passes in um, 
a, a username. Uh, you can do it via content or uh, Excel sheet or CSV sheet, or you can type it into the uh, parameter um, and then have it give you specific information. So like I said before, forget AD person. Uh, I created a, a a a a list of uh properties that i wanted and i gave it the order uh param in order to display it in the order that i wanted to display in so i wanted the display name the given name the username mail all that good stuff so i mean there are a lot of fun things that you can do with powershell obviously and we're going to get to it however i just wanted to show you guys how to get my tools to show up what i'm going to do also now is go ahead and import this automatically so i'm going to open up my profile because I want my tools to show up automatically when I start up my console. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, open it back up. When it gets done loading, get module. And we should see that my tools is indeed available and ready to go. It's ready for action. So this is TechJax. Uh, that was um, importing a module so that you guys can have it available for you. Uh, that was a customized module. If you guys have any questions, any feedback, please let me know. I appreciate you guys' views, and please uh, keep on watching. Thank you.